I'm not sure if you consider this card game changing, but I think you'll see a lot of people playing him once Rise of Floodborne is out. Hi everyone, this is D7 from Mushu Report, where we cover all things Lokana. And Emerald Steel Ink got so many crazy good cards over the past couple of weeks that I think that Emerald Steel Ink might be a deck to look out for in the upcoming set. So, first up, of course, we have Beast Relentless. This is a really crazy good card. It's a 6 ink. 4-5 stats, Emerald Ink card with 2 law. So what's most important is about his ability, which states that when an opposing character gets damaged, then he gets to ready himself. This is kind of similar to Aerial Who's It Collector, where she got to ready herself whenever an item card is played, but this is so much better because he can even just ready himself just by challenging an opponent. So he challenges an opponent, the opposing character gets damaged, and then guess what? He gets to raid himself. But as if that wasn't enough, why did I say about comboing Emerald Ink with Steel? Well, there's also cards like Hans. So Hans, when he quests, you get to deal a damage to an opposing character, which means that you can do stuff like quest for two law, then you get to use Hans to deal one damage to your opposing character, you get to ready beast, and then you get to quest again for another two law. So that's four law just from this very simple but interaction alone. Aside from that, you also get Grab Your Sword. Grab Your Sword is a song card which means you can exert beast to sing the Grab Your Sword for free. Then after that, you get to deal 2 damage to all your opposing characters which means that Beast Relentless can ready himself so he can play another copy of Grab Your Sword perhaps. Or you can just even quest because there is no restriction on him getting the quest after he uses his ability. So you get to ready Beast Relentless a lot of times to just quest, which means if you really like to ready all your cards, all your ink and all your characters at the start of every turn, then well, Beast Relentless is the perfect card for you. Then aside from that, we have the OP kit with a couple of nice steel cards, like for example, Robin Hood Capable Fighter. Robin Hood, when he exerts, you get to deal 1 damage to your opposing character, so kind of similar like Hans, so that works really well with Beast Relentless as well. Another nice new card is Cinderella Night in Training. When you play her, you get to draw one card and discard a card. So that's similar to Simba Future King, just that this is a two law version. So combine these two cards together. That means that Steel Ink can really just easily filter through the cards and get to keep the cards that they want while loading up the discard pile. We got a couple other nice cards in the OP kit, but we're talking about Emerald Steel Ink today, so let's focus on that. OPK aside, now we have Panic. Something I always do when I see a turn 3 Tinkerbell Tiny Tactician on the field wondering if I will see Giant Fairy next turn. So Panic Underworld Im is a nice card to actually use because when you play him, you get to give a chosen character plus 2 strength. Or then, well, if it's Pain, you get to give plus 4. Currently, we do not know what Pain is like and why is his stat and how much he costs to play. So we currently discuss about the plus 4 strength for now, but plus 2 is pretty much similar to Megara's ability. But I think for this Panic, it's really nice since it's a good replacement for Cheshire Cat. Cheshire Cat kind of at the moment feels like, you know, you're just questing and waiting for your opponent to just take him out. In the meantime, you just quest for two law and hopefully you get to use him a couple more times. But well, Panic actually has some body stat to him with two three stats and also he gets to give your other character strength to take out an opposing character the only issue with panic is just that he cannot be in so that's the benefit cheshire cat has so which one of these two do you play for your three cost emerald card well that's for you to consider then we also have Hypnotize, a nice action card that is kind of similar to Sudden Chill from the first chapter where your opponent has to choose and discard a card, but Sudden Chill is a song card. Hypnotize here is 3 cost and Emerald Ink as well. Your opponent also chooses and discards a card, but in return for not being able to be sung, you actually draw a card from Hypnotize. So that's a nice way to make sure that you keep your cards going. You don't want to play Sudden Chill at the moment because you end up kind of losing out a card. But with Hypnotize over here, you still draw a card. So that means there's no loss for you at all. Or of course, there's also Improvise, which is another nice one cost action card for Amber Ink. So Improvise, you give a one strength to any chosen character and then you draw a card. So it's a really easy, nice way to just draw a card. It's kind of like develop your brain. Just a developed brain, you get to choose one of the cards to put it under the deck. So you get to put something that you don't want. But for Amber Ink, which doesn't have that much strength, Improvise is one nice card. Make sure you continue drawing while giving your character strength as well to take out your opponent's character. So that's the Emerald cards. The last card we'll talk about today is 
mouse armor. So this is a steel item card that when you exert it, you give a character resist plus one. So they will be able to resist against damage. So one nice card to give this resist plus one to is of course Beast Relentless. Because on his own, you can use him to just keep challenging your opponent's character. So if he has that resist plus one, then well, he can keep on challenging and potentially clear your opponent's board of all their characters. Since he can just keep on challenging through his ability alone. So that's some really nice cards for Emma and Steel Ink to definitely consider in this upcoming set for Rise of Floodborne. So make sure you look out for all these cards. Another thing that is really interesting to consider is definitely Legendary Rares because Team Lokana actually dropped this statement today stating we've seen two legends so far. Bell and Beast in Emra. And there's one more repeat who is already a legend. There are three more who exist from the first chapter and there are six characters which are all brand new. I'm assuming it's all characters here just based on how it's said and also by the understanding of Disney, it's really all about the characters. That's why a lot of us are actually interested in Volcana. So yeah, I'm thinking that all chuff are characters because well, you have two plus one plus three plus six. So we confirm that there's still chuff legendaries. And then the thing is, so who else is going to be the repeat for the legendary? My thoughts is, of course, Mickey Mouse. Because who else is it going to be? Maybe there's going to be a guaranteed Mickey Mouse in every single set for the upcoming year or so. <laughs> I think that's highly possible. And then the three more that existed in the first chapter. I have a couple of thoughts on this. One of them is hopefully Genie. I think that he's a really nice card that... Uh, I think that he's a really nice character that many people love and I think he deserves a legendary rarity for sure. Then a couple more I would say is Ariel, one of the princesses that did not get legendary rarity. And then I'm hoping personally for one my favorite, Mulan, where Mulan should actually get legendary as well since they didn't really do too much of the cards from Mulan in the first chapter. And it seems like there's more Mulan cards inside Rise of Floodborne. Hopefully Mulan can be a legendary as well. Then that's the ones that we know from the first chapter. As for the six brand new ones, I don't really have any thoughts of it right now. Maybe Raya, for example, I think should be a pretty good bet. Aside from her, I don't have really any sure thoughts at the moment. So that's about it for this last couple of weeks, the news. All right, so that's Emerald Steel. I think definitely something to look out for. I apologize that I haven't been doing too much videos recently. The work is really getting crazy. It's the end of year. There's a lot of activities and events. And I've been just crazy updating the wiki and the news site for everyone. So I hope you guys forgive me about that. I'll try to do more videos regularly as well from here. But Yes, that's it for today. Stay tuned for more stuff from Mushu Report. Thank you everyone for watching. This is D Summon from Mushu Report. Signing out.